Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Pastor Hiroshi was preaching in a, a mouth shield the past two weeks, and so I, I think maybe I should do that too. <laughs> just, for, yeah. just for safety. Right. Just to be blameless. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But please open your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 10 Luke 15 verses 1 through 10 and uh, we'll preach uh, briefly on this parable these two parables that Jesus uh, preached oh uh, make sure you have your own Bible open your own Bible app uh, it will help you as we look uh, through this because I'll refer to uh, other parts from this chapter as well. So, Luke chapter 15. Please join me uh, at verse, uh, verse 8. I'll read verse 1 through 7. Please join me at verse 8. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. And let's read together. Or, suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The very words of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. If you think you are better than other people based on your ethnic background. You are a racist. <laughs> if you think you are better than somebody based on your gender, you are a sexist. If you think you are better than someone because of the social status. You are a classist. If you think you are better than someone because of your political position or party, you are becoming a fascist. Now, let me teach you another one. If you think you're better than someone because of your religion or your spiritual doctrine. You are a Pharisee. Yeah. That's the point of this chapter. Jesus is bringing the kingdom of God. It's called the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first for the Jew, 
than for the Gentile. That's Romans. I'm not ashamed because Jesus brought the gospel with him. And so here's what's happening when he brought the gospel. In Luke chapter 11, we see something happening about Jesus as he travels from the countryside of Galilee to the main city of Jerusalem. It says constantly, repeatedly, again and again, the crowds that follow Jesus began to increase. There are bigger and bigger people, groups of people following him. And then also at the same time, constantly, again and again, it's written, now Jesus was speaking with the Pharisees. Jesus was having a meal with the Pharisees. Jesus was talking with the Pharisees. So on the one hand, you have the crowds getting bigger and bigger. And on the other hand, you have the Pharisees with their questions and their accusations getting stronger and stronger. And it comes to the climax right here. Luke 15. Jesus says, I'm bringing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is for everyone. It's for everybody. High class, low class, rich, poor, religious, non-religious, uh, 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 male, female, free, slave, Jew, and Gentile. I'm bringing it for everyone. And here's the problem. Not everyone wants it. Not everyone accepts it. Because the, the secret to the kingdom of heaven is this. Here, here is the reason why people leave the church. And here is why some people cannot stay in Christianity. Jesus did not come to make life better. Jesus came to make life new. He did not come to give you teachings and principles that will help you improve your life, reform your life. No, 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 no. Jesus came not only with teachings, not only with miracles, but with a sacrifice to transform your life. And if you cannot accept that Jesus came to save you, you cannot remain a Christian. And so the Pharisees have trouble with this because here's what's happening. Jesus is traveling and in Mark or excuse me, Luke chapter 7, you know, Jesus says, "The son of man has come to, 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 to eat and drink. He's coming, eating and drinking. And the Pharisees say, he's a drunkard and a glutton. He's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And again, here in Luke chapter 15, Jesus is, is uh, uh, Jesus, the, the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus. They, they love Jesus. Here's two kinds of people. High-class sinners and low-class sinners. Tax collectors are the thieves who wear suits. That's what they were, okay? They were robbers in, in nice clothing. That's what the tax collectors were. The sinners, they were just like, you know, typical. They looked like bad people, all right? And so they both loved Jesus because Jesus was straight with them. Jesus told them directly, you need me. And they understood, yeah, we need you, Jesus. Without you, we're lost. And the Pharisees would see this and they would think, does, does Jesus know what he's doing? Why does he spend his time, why does he waste his time with these bad people, these bad men, bad women. I mean, if he was really God, how could he do this? Yeah, and so here's what Jesus does. Okay, you want to ask me why? 
I'll tell you some stories. So he gives three stories. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. This is known as the lost parables because he gives three parables about three things that were valuable. The sheep, the coin, and the son. And the point of each parable, the climax, which is next week, is the son who was lost. But it's not just the, the, that God found those things that were lost. It's that God rejoiced. God with joy carried the sheep back. The woman with joy partied with her friends. The father with joy made a, a celebration. And there is great rejoicing in heaven. Great rejoicing in the presence of the angels. But there was murmuring amongst the elder brothers, amongst the Pharisees. Because they thought they don't deserve the goodness of God. They didn't do what we did to receive God's blessing. And so today, it's very simple. I'm actually going to be here for five more minutes, and then we'll close. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the, the record for one of my sermons. It's very simple. I want to give you a warning, and I want to celebrate with you. I want to warn anybody here who might be a Pharisee. It's a warning. That's what this is. That's what these three parables are. He's saying, are you a Pharisee? Do you see somebody and think, maybe they don't deserve it? And I know, I know, nobody says that here. No, nobody's going to say, no one can come, no one deserves to be in the church. No one deserves God. I know we don't say that. But it's very, very tricky. Let me give you one example. In Tokyo, the number of infections are, are more now than they were in April and May, right? The number of infections. And then a few weeks ago, you know, it, it was starting to, to spike, starting to surge again. And what would the news people say? The, the, the reason why it's surging in Tokyo is because the people in the nightclubs and in the bars and in the hostess and host clubs and in the kabakura, I don't know, whatever, kab, whatever. They're, they're those clubs, right? It's the night businesses, quote unquote. Now, I'm not going to say it out, well, I'm going to say it out loud, but maybe this is what we were thinking. Because this is probably what a lot of people thought. Well, those people. Though, of course, those people, don't, sh don't they know better? Don't they, don't they, shouldn't they, ha you know, have a, 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 some common sense? They deserve to get COVID. They des oh, yeah, that's what they get for being so foolish. If that thought, even just the slightest bit, came into your mind, be careful. Because the moment you say to yourself, those people, that is the direction of the Pharisee. You don't know why they made those decisions. You don't know how if they live from day to day and they need that that business. You don't know what's happening in those people's lives. You can't judge them. I can't judge them. Only God can. One more example. This happens to the foreigners, I know, because I'm one of them. Someone insults you. Someone hurts you. Someone disrespects you. And in your heart, you want to you want something to be done. You want justice. You want action. You, you want revenge. 
and you, you can't do anything. You have not the words, you don't have the language, you don't know the, the culture. And so here's the thought that goes into your head. If only they could understand. If they knew who I, if they could understand me, if I could speak their language as well as they could, and that thought enters your head, and now there's a small separation between you, the foreigner, and them, the Japanese. If that thought comes into your mind, be careful, be warned, that's the direction of a Pharisee. Because God came as Jesus Christ to say, it's not you versus them. We are all sinners. We all need a savior. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, each to his own way. We all need a savior. That's what Christians are. And listen now, here's the point. Christianity is not for the good people. Jesus Christ said, I did not come for the healthy. I came for the sick. It's not, are you good enough to qualify for salvation? The question is, do you understand that you need a savior? That's the question. Christianity is for sinners. And if you can humble yourself and admit to God and yourself and say, I am a sinner. Jesus Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. If that is your prayer, every minute, every moment, as you wake to the time you go to bed, congratulations, you qualify for salvation. You can be a Christian. Because you understand, you need... Listen, when the Bible calls you sheep, that is not something to make you feel good. That's an insult, right? <laughs> okay, how do I know? I don't know. I'm not a shepherd, but there was a pastor who was a shepherd. And this is what he says. Uh, a minister who was once a shepherd and then he became a pastor. So, let me get to it. Here it is. Okay. Uh, a sheep is a stupid animal. It loses its direction continually in a way a cat or dog never does. Even when you find a lost sheep, the lost sheep rushes to and fro and will not follow you home. And when you find it, you must seize it, throw it to the ground, tie its four legs and hind legs together, put it over your shoulders, and carry it home. That's the only way to save a lost sheep. If you can't say amen, you ought to say ouch. Listen, I love Jesus because he found me. He looked for me. He searched for me. And he did it, he, he, he did it when I was young. We had a testimony here this morning uh, from some women. Uh, one of them already passed away. Pastor Dida read the testimony of a woman and of how God looked for her. God searched for her. God went after her. She was, um, she had her, her husband passed away, I think. Yeah, and uh, she was at the barber shop. And at the barber shop, she read a sign on the wall and it said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. This was at the barber shop, right? That's Dida's story. Yeah, Dida's, yeah, yeah Dida was reading. No. Oh, that was Dida's sensei. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood the language. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And it just, oh, but that makes it even better, because, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Sometimes we'll baptize somebody 
who's 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old. God has been searching. God has been calling them. God has been looking for them for decades and decades, right? And some people think, oh, it's too old. How could, that, what a wasted life. No! God found them and rescued them even at that age. It's never too late. And God continues to search and, and continues to run. I love God. I love Jesus because He never gives up. Man. And then, I just want to celebrate. Let's just celebrate. Were you a lost coin? Were you a lost sheep? Were you wandering in sin and selfishness? Were you, uh, did you find yourself hurting and bruised, attacked by wolves or caught in some kind of thicket? Were you way out, away from, far from home? And you had no way to go back home. And in fact, when Jesus saw you and you saw Jesus, you ran away from him. You didn't want him, and still he came and he picked you up. He tied your legs and he put you on his shoulders. Were you, was your life messy and your house a complete disaster zone? And Jesus came and cleaned up. He picked all the dust up. He swept everything away. He tidied up and he found you and he picked you up and he put you back with the other nine. If that's you, praise the Lord. Shout to the Lord, my Jesus, my Savior. Lord, there is none like you. Because listen, listen, I've got six kids. I give up on them easily. They want to cry and, and whine and, and they don't want to eat their dinner. Fine, go to bed. Don't eat anything. You'll be fine. I'll give up easily. But Jesus, he never gave up on me. He never gave up until he finished. So I just want to rejoice and celebrate my great shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Lord, we come to you now and we remember that we are sheep, but you are the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that because you were the lamb that gave your life, we can be the sheep that can return home, Lord. And so I pray, God, that you will allow us to repent of being a Pharisee, of thinking ourselves better than other people, of having an attitude that we deserve salvation or that we, uh, we have earned it by our right belief or our good religion. Lord, have mercy on us. And we repent of that uh, foolishness. But Lord, we also rejoice. We repent and we rejoice that you saved us and you save us to the end. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.